Good evening, everyone. I'm Suhaib Gismalbari, uh, Director of Talking About Trees. Uh, special thanks to my dear friend, Mahin, to Dora and to all the team, and to Getty, who introduced me uh, to Mahin. Thank you, Getty. Uh, Mahin, uh, you asked me before uh, for starting this interview to show a little bit where do I live. I live in a place called Hayal Umda. It's in Umdurman. Um, this is my street. My street. Uh, and uh, the house, the blue one, is the house of my grandparents, where I was born, where I grew up, where I spent my first 17 uh, years. Um, so this is it. Uh, let's start the interview. Well, about the first question um, about uh, the do documentary and fiction in talking about trees. Uh, well, um, what counts in documentary, actually, it's, the, um, it's uh, to be faithful to the characters, not to betray the characters, not to cheat them, um, not to change what they are saying into something that they do not believe in. Uh, not to manipulate their lives. Um, this is the basic um, ethical engagement uh, in documentary filmmaking. Uh, and for me, it's very important because without this ethical engagement, uh, documentary can very fast become a kind of uh, voyeurism. Either it's voyeurism, uh, cultural voyeurism, or class voyeurism. And so on. For me, this is not cinema at all. Uh, but at the same time, with this uh, ethical engagement, uh, making a documentary doesn't mean that we don't work the reality. We don't not write it. We don't not rewrite it. Um, so we are fictionalizing the reality from the moment we from the moment we put our camera on. Uh, we are fictionalizing the reality. Um, and personally, I do not see uh, the barriers between fiction, uh, cinema, and documentary cinema. I think it's all cinema. And my film is a film uh, about the celebration of the love of those four uh, characters of cinema. Uh, it's also about their desire. It's not only a film about the history of cinema in Sudan also. Uh, it's a film about the desire of cinema, uh, the attempts of cinema. Uh, it's about the films that they made. The, the images they created, but also about the images they have been dreaming and about since 40 years, and they remain uh, desires, they remain dreams. So it was a difficult question for me in the beginning, how I'm going to uh, show this, um, this part of the invisible, the, the, the images who are not there. And they have been kidding and uh, mocking me from the beginning, telling me that I came to make this film 40 years late because they were, they considered that they were more active at that time and they were creating images more than now. Now they are making films, but of course less. Um, and, and yes, uh, it was uh, a challenge uh, in the beginning. But um, the fact that it's a film about uh, the celebration of cinema, uh, I felt like uh, I love documentary cinema and fictional cinema. And I believe that today, uh, in documentary cinema, there is more uh, experimentation and we are uh, more free, maybe because the documentary is less important in the market, uh, in the market and uh, in terms of money, I mean. Uh, so there is more freedom. Um, there is more experimentation and creation and imagination. And, uh, and also the fact that um, I was filming under very difficult uh, conditions without authorizations. Um, 
of course that prevented me from having all what I wanted but also at the same time um, it created a kind of challenge I was challenged in every frame and every scene um, to think about it twice uh, and also fiction was present because we have to we had to invent every time a fictional story in case we get uh, someone annoying us why are you filming here or something um, filming film makers uh, who are friends since 45 years they have their language their uh, references their uh, their jokes they refer always to cinema it elevates also the reality it, it makes it something uh, very uh, creative artistic and poetic actually so of course uh, i didn't hesitate a moment to to use uh, narrative tools uh, i don't know even why people assign these to to fictional cinema it's, it comes it's uh, much older it comes from from uh, literature from oral traditions of telling stories actually um, and also the, the reality in Sudan is full of, uh, of fiction um, and a work of a documentarist also is to, is to search and to discover this fiction um, our reality in Sudan is, is very surrealistic it offers a lot of fiction all the time Well, I'm quite happy that you asked me this question about the scene of uh, Suleiman um, um, listening to the discourse of the <coughs> of the dictator, uh, and then sleeping in front of it, and then comes uh, his film, his lost film, Africa. Uh, I particularly love this scene because it's maybe the only happy end uh, in my film because his uh, film was found after 30 years. Uh, we searched for it uh, for more than three years. Uh, I was uh, helped by a friend of mine, her name is Rasha Selti, uh, who was helped by a French researcher, her name is Gabriel. Uh, and they managed to find the film. <coughs> um, this scene counts a lot for me. Um, uh, in the beginning, when they told me that they found the film, uh, my plan was to to go to Suleiman's place uh, and to film him, then to tell him that they found the film and to film his reaction. Uh, but I was so excited to a point that uh, when I called him, I was so happy, and I directly told him. And uh, it was a great moment, but I missed it. I didn't film it. So I didn't know how, how I'm going to put this. Uh, and I didn't know if it's important to put it uh, after that or, or no. But the film uh, became very heavy after uh, the screening was prevented, uh, after their discussion uh, uh, when they say that they are more intelligent than uh, the others the, uh, are uh, stronger and they have weapons. Uh, and then we see uh, Suleiman watching the dictator, making his uh, propaganda, um, and it felt very heavy. <clears throat> um, this scene, um, there is something hidden in it. Uh, sometimes, because of the conditions of the screening, uh, the screenings, um, when the sound is not strong enough, we miss it. And, or sometimes when the speakers are uh, are closed, we miss this uh, this scene. While I worked very much on the sound uh, with the sound editor, with the great sound editor, Jan Mali, uh, and the idea was that uh, uh, when Suleiman sleeps calmly, like an angel, in front of uh, the TV, uh, we are focused on Suleiman. Uh, behind him, uh, the dictator is blurred. Uh, and then Suleiman starts breathing we start hearing his uh, breath and it gets stronger and stronger 
and uh, slowly, when he ex exhales, he pushes away the the voice of the dictator. And it was kind of uh, a symbolic victory. Uh, at that time, it was a difficult time, and uh, there was no hope. Um, or, of course, th there's always hope, but it wasn't a very hopeful year. 2015, uh, the dictator re-elected in a course in a, uh, in a, an election uh, totally uh, fake, unlike uh, the elections this year in the U.S. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, the, he feels strong. Uh, his regime is very settled, and uh, it's just two years after the massacre that they committed um, against the the protesters who went out in the streets in 2013, and uh, and it was a moment of joy for me to just by the breath. Uh, by the breathing of Suleiman, it says a lot. I don't know exactly. I don't want to explain everything. Uh, um, and then suddenly, just it came naturally that uh, his film should be introduced here, uh, especially that the film talks about uh, the revolution in Africa. Uh, it starts by uh, a children's song. Uh, cliche children's song about uh, the stereotypes of Africa. As an African person, when you hear it, uh, you laugh because they put even some animals who do not exist, uh, who do not exist in, in Africa. Uh, and there is a part of it they talk about a barmale. A barmale is a, is a pirate, because uh, I grew up a little bit in, in Russia. Um, and for me, it was a little bit like uh, an echo to, to Bashir. Uh, to Omar al-Bashir also, this uh, wicked pirate, uh, and so. Although it's, uh, of course, very stereotypical, and, and uh, the intention of Suleiman of putting this uh, in front, uh, in the beginning of his film, was uh, to counter it later by showing the revolution in Africa of uh, the 60s and 70s. Well, about their uh, kindness and humanity towards each other. This is something that I cannot describe with words. Maybe that was my motivation to make the film, um, to explain it with images and sound. They are the most kind and nice and uh, funny group of friends. And for me, they define uh, their example of friendship in a time where most of the friendships are virtual or based on work or interest and so. Um, they know each other uh, since 45 years. They were united by their passion for cinema, but then their friendship became something bigger than cinema. Uh, it's an um, art of survival. It's an art of uh, kindness and of humanity. Uh, they are very caring to each other, to the injuries of each other. Um, they are really affected by what happens to each of them. Um, and very helpful to each other. And uh, I was included in this group after. Um, and I benefited uh, from this. Um, uh, the film uh, owes a lot to this. Uh, because of this friendship, um, many uh, obstacles uh, were resolved, many problems were resolved. Uh, for example, um, to film four characters, it's very difficult. And when we are alone and with one camera, uh, and to motivate four uh, people at the same time, it's very difficult also. But I was, uh, I was uh, profiting from this uh, friendship that they can motivate each other. When one of them gets a little bit depressed or uh, demotivated, then the others push him. And especially Manar. Uh, in the group, I had two spies. <laughs> uh, Suleiman, who introduced me to, to the group, and uh, he, he organized, really, my batem <laughs> uh, in the group. 
and uh, and then Manar because Manar uh, he's uh, kind of the heart of the group uh, with his laughs with his jokes uh, uh, he can do anything sometimes we had shootings and one of them or two uh, wanted to leave and they were tired and so and and I just okay said okay I stopped the, the shooting and then Manar goes and uh, comes and asks me if uh, I got everything that I wanted and then I say no but well, let them leave their tears and just Manar goes to talk to them magically they are motivated again and and he did this a lot he was kind of my uh, my mother in the during the shooting of course my real mother helped a lot to make the, the film to secure the footage um, uh, and a lot of a lot of other things I owe, owe her a lot uh, but Manar was very maternal also to me uh, during the shootings and I think because he saw me doing everything by my own before I was joined with a small team uh, and he was very tender he, he used to to check uh, he realized that I have uh, memory problems I forget a lot and he was very happy of that and uh, he told me ah oh, okay luckily you came now I have the second worst memory in, in the group <laughs> And he used to, to go look after me if I forgot a lens. And many times he would bring uh, the equipment and, and, and so. So this, um, yes, the main motivation of this film, of course, is to show this. Uh, it's a film about this philosophy of hope. They are hope philosophers and of friendship uh, and of solidarity. Well, uh, the title, Talking About Trees, uh, it comes from a poem by Bertolt Brecht. Um, uh, to those who born later, or uh, to those who come after us. Uh, and it goes, uh, what times are these when a talk about trees is almost a crime, because it implies silence uh, about, uh, about so many horrors, or something like that. I used to hear this sentence uh, from my father when I was a child, um, describing uh, the, the years of uh, the beginning of the 90s in Sudan after the coup d'etat, um, describing the state of fascism and uh, militarization of the society, and, uh, and stayed in my mind since that time. And I, of course, I read the, the poem uh, Brecht uh, after. And it was always in my mind. Uh, till the moment while we were shooting, uh, Manar, uh, there is a scene, uh, he's uh, uh, chatting with, uh, with Ibrahim uh, on the roof of the cinema, and they're discussing about organizing the screen, and then uh, before he sleeps, uh, uh, he says the, the same sentence. So uh, directly in my mind, it was uh, the title. Uh, the first title, waiting, uh, 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 The Waiting Bench, uh, came uh, from the first time I met uh, Ibrahim Shaddad. And Ibrahim is very, uh, it's very tricky. Uh, when he meets someone, he wants to test the people. Uh, he can't, uh, before trusting them, he takes his time to give trust. And he asked me, um, okay, so you studied cinema in France and, and then uh, and now you came back uh, to Sudan to make films. And I told him, yes. And, and he uh, responded, oh, okay, so you're committing the same error that we made 40 years ago. And then he went asking me uh, very difficult questions, uh, like, uh, is your family rich? Uh, they can produce your films? And I said, no. Uh, do you have any relations with the security services or uh, the police or the government? And I said, of course not. Uh, so he uh, so he said, uh, well, now you have two options. Either you go back to France and you make uh, films, uh, uh, love stories, and uh, you get uh, money and you get paid for what you're doing, or um, you're crazy enough and you come back to Sudan and uh, we can uh, free uh, a place for you on our waiting bench. Of course, later I discovered that was uh, humor because they were not on uh, waiting bench, they were acting. And this is how the, the story of the film started 